Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing real numbers. I have this calculator pulled up here, which it's an app called Calculate 84. It's this little blue one right here. It is really similar to the TI-84 calculator that you will get to use on your star test. Okay, so let's start with classifying real numbers. So remember we have these numbers right here, which all fall under rational numbers. So natural numbers are the most basic numbers. They're whole numbers starting with one, positive whole numbers starting with one, like one, two, three, four, or anything that would simplify to a positive whole number. And then whole numbers is the same thing, but we add zero. Integers, we add negative whole numbers. And then rational numbers, we add fractions, terminating decimals, decimals that stop, or repeating decimals. And then irrational numbers is a separate set of numbers within the real number system um, that includes pi or square roots that do not equal a perfect square. It's a decimal that goes on forever with no pattern. So let's look at this first one. It says draw a Venn diagram to show the relationship between natural numbers and integers. So all natural numbers, that's like one, two, three, four, and so on, are considered to be integers as well. Integers, we just add zero and negative numbers to it. So natural numbers would go inside integers. So there's a Venn diagram that could represent that. There would be our natural numbers on the inside, and all natural numbers are included in integers. Okay, let's look at the second, second one. Draw a Venn diagram to show the relationship between whole numbers and rational numbers. So it's similar to the last one. Whole numbers are included within rational numbers because rational numbers includes all whole numbers. And then at number three, draw a Venn diagram to show the relationship between rational, irrational, and the real number system. So the real number system is going to include both rational and irrational numbers. So I'm going to make a large box representing real numbers. And within the real number system, we have rational numbers. And we have irrational numbers, but they do not overlap at all. Okay, now we're going to look at square roots. So remember when you take the square root of a number, you ask yourself what number multiplied by itself will equal that number that we're taking the square root of. And a reminder to find the side length of a square when you're given the area you would just take the square root of the area because a square has the same side length and it would be the side length squared equals the area. Okay, let's look at number four. It says, which point on a number line best represents the square root of 75? So I'm gonna use a calculator to take the square root of 75. Remember you hit the second key and then the square key and 75 and I get 8.66. So it's halfway between, or a little more than halfway between eight and nine. So that definitely throws out point A and point B. And it is more than halfway between eight and nine. So point D would be the best representation there. Okay, and then number five says, Alice completely covered a square bulletin board with 109 inches squared of paper without any overlap. What is the measurement of the side length of the bulletin board? So she has a square bulletin board that has an area of 109 inches squared. And we want to know what the side length is of the square. So the side length times the side length is how they got 109 or you can do side length squared equals 109. So now you can see to figure out what the side length is, I'm gonna do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. And the square root of 109 is about 10.4 inches.
Okay, scientific notation. Remember, this is a shorter way to write a large or a very small number. And you write it with a decimal number between one and 10, and then it's multiplied by a power of 10. And remember, a positive exponent means a large number, and a negative exponent means a number less than one. So let's look at number six. It says convert 1,203,000 to scientific notation. So the first thing I wanna do is make a number between one and 10. So I would move the decimal behind the first non-zero number I see when I'm reading it. So 1.203 would be my decimal. We don't ever round. And then at times 10, it's going to be a positive exponent since that number is larger than one. And my decimal was here and I moved it here. So now I'm just gonna count how many place values I moved. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 1.203 times 10 to the sixth would be that number in scientific notation. Okay, next one, first thing I notice is that this is a small number. I'm starting with zero, so I'm gonna have a negative exponent. And I need to move my decimal behind the first non-zero I number I see, which is eight. So my new decimal will be 8.3. It's always times 10. This one's going to be a negative exponent since the number is less than one. And let's count how many place values I moved. One, two, three, four, five. So 8.3 times 10 to the negative five would be that number in scientific notation. Okay, now in number eight, I have a number in scientific notation and I wanna convert it to standard form. The first thing you wanna do is notice if the exponent is positive or negative. This one is positive. That means that this is a large number and the way I would make the number larger is by moving the decimal to the right. And I'm gonna move it to the right four times since the exponent was four. So I'll move it to the right, one, two, three, four. So that means I'll have to add one zero there. So it'll be one, three, zero, two, zero. And there's the comma if you wanna put a comma there. Okay, then this next one, convert 9.09 .09 times 10 to the negative third to standard form. I see I have a negative exponent, so this time I'm dealing with a small number. And to make this number smaller or less than one, I would move the decimal to the left. And I'm gonna move it to the left one, two, three times. So it's gonna be 0 .00 and then the rest of the digits. So 0 .00909 would be that number in standard form. Okay, the last thing that we are going to look at is ordering real numbers. To order real numbers, you want to convert them all to the same form. Usually decimals is the easiest form to compare them in. And make sure that you are careful with your negative numbers. Sometimes drawing a number line can help you if you're having a hard time placing them. So number 10 says order the numbers below from least to greatest. So first thing I'm gonna do is convert the decimals. 63% would be, you can divide by 104% or just move the decimal back twice. It would be 0 0.63. And then five eighths, I'm just gonna do five divided by eight in the calculator to get that decimal and I get 0.625. And then two thirds, I'll just do two divided by three. That would round to 0.667. I'm gonna go three digits out since that last one was three digits out. The 0 0.06 is already a decimal and square root of 10 divided by five. We need to be very careful about how we type this into the calculator. You need to make sure that you do square root of 10 and not put the divided by five under the radical sign with it. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. The first way is to put the square root of 10 inside parentheses. Just make sure you arrow out to the right like I did and then divide by five we get 0.632, or you can use the fraction template on the calculator by clicking alpha y equals. There's a little fraction template and we can type in square root of 10 divided by five. Either way, you can see it is 0 0.632. 
Okay, now I was wanting to order from least to greatest. And as you can see, these numbers are very, very close together. They all start with 0.6. Three of the numbers go three digits out. What I'm gonna do is add a zero to this one, and I'm gonna add two zeros to the 0.6. So now it's easier to compare. They all have three digits. So I can just look at those three digits and compare. And it's easy to see that the 0.6 is the smallest number. And then after that, it looks like the 0.625, which was 5 eighths, would be the next smallest number. And after the 5 eighths, it looks like the 0 0.630 or the 63% is the smallest. And then 0.632 would come next, so that was the square root of 10 over 5. And then at last, I would have the 2 thirds, the 0.667. So there are the numbers listed from least to greatest. Okay, let's look at number 11. It says, order the numbers below from greatest to least. So the first thing that I notice is it says greatest to least. And I also see that I have positive and negative numbers. So greatest to least means I'm gonna have my positive numbers first and my negative numbers after. So I already know these two negative numbers will be at the end because it's greatest to least and negatives are already smaller than positive numbers. So I'm gonna start by converting just the positive numbers and order those first, and then I'll do the negatives second. So pi over four, I'm gonna convert that to a decimal by doing pi divided by four. And we get 0.785. So I'm gonna round that to 0.79. And then 78%, you can move the decimal back twice or divide by 100, and I get 0.78. So greatest to least, the pi over four would come first, and the 78% next, since those are my two positive numbers. All right, I've taken care of the positive numbers, so let's look at the negative numbers next. So I have negative 7.77, that is already in decimal form, negative 7 ninths. I'm gonna convert that to a decimal by dividing and I get negative 0.7 repeating. That one is closer to zero, so that is the larger number. So negative 7 ninths would come next and then negative 7.77 after.